At the beginning of this chapter, we talked about how the key is to know which are the strong, weak, and non-electrolytes in this chapter. And we said that the strong electrolytes included salts that dissolved in water, and to decide what those are, we needed the solubility rules that you memorized. The strong acids, of which we'll learn in this video cast, there are seven that we need to memorize, and the strong bases, of which there are eight that we need to memorize. Of these, the salts are ionic, meaning that they have a metal in them, or two polyatomic ions stuck together. And the strong acids and strong the strong acids are molecular, but they completely dissociate to form ions, and the strong bases are actually the soluble hydroxides, which we'll learn in a little while as well, and so they're kind of like salts as well. The weak and nons, remember, are everything else, everything else, and so by knowing the strong electrolytes, Everything else that you encounter that's not a strong electrolyte is a weak or non. And the weaks and nons are the weaks, I'm sorry, are the weak acids and the weak bases, and we'll learn a few of those during this video cast as well. So, which are the strong electrolytes? Once again, the strong electrolytes include seven strong acids, and here's how to remember them. Hyber, HBr, or hydrobromic acid, Hickel, HCl or hydrochloric acid, high hydroiodic acid or HI, HONO, HNO3 or nitric acid, HICLO, HClO3, and HClO4. Don't forget it's 3N4, so that gives us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of the acids. And the last strong acid is H2SO4, sulfuric acid. So to memorize these is super simple. It's a little cheer. It's kind of like rah rah, you rah rah, yay yay yay, like the south. But this one goes Hyber Hickel High, Hono Hickel Low, H2SO4. Once again, say it with me. Hyber Hickel High, Hono Hickel Low, H2SO4. It's the cheer, and we'll say it in the class, and you'll have to memorize what those seven acids are. The strong bases are super easy to remember because they're the soluble hydroxides of the group one and three group two hydroxides, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium hydroxide, which notice all have a positive one and negative one charge. That gives us one, two, three, four, five of them. And then calcium, which remember has a plus two charge, strontium, which has a plus two charge, and barium, which has a plus two charge. So those are eight of them. And the easy way to remember where those are or what those are is by looking at the periodic table and noticing that lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, calcium, strontium, barium form the shape of a B on the periodic table. You can see that it forms kind of a B-shaped thing. I can even put like a little circle right here. And you can say that those are the strong bases. They're the hydroxides of those. Don't forget that calcium, strontium, barium right here are in group two, so they have a plus two charge. So those ones always give two hydroxides. And then of course the soluble ionic salts, those are the other strong ones, and those you memorize the solubility rules for. So what makes them special? Why is it important to know what the strong acids and the strong bases are? Well, remember we said that knowing what the strong electrolytes are is the key to this chapter. And the second and the third types of strong electrolytes are the strong acids and the strong bases. And the first type, of course, was the soluble ionic salts. We said the strong acids and the strong bases uh, had an easy way to memorize them, but what makes them special? Well, take for example HBr, Hyber. The reason that it's special is because when it dissolves in water, it forms H plus and Br minus and completely dissociates or breaks up to form these ions. There is none of this left. 
there's all these ions right here, which is kind of unusual for us because we usually say when you have an arrow, it produces, forms, or makes all of this kind of stuff. But it's the not strong ones that actually become very interesting to us in chapter 16 and chapter 17 later on. Which ones are not strong? Well, some examples of not strong acids would be things like acetic acid, HC2H3O2. That's the acid that's in vinegar. This one would not completely dissociate to form H plus and C2H3O2 minus. As a matter of fact, most of it would like to stay together. Hydrofluoric acid, that's another acid that is not strong. It's a weak acid. How do I know that these are weak acids? Well, it's not part of the ones that I memorized. It's not hyperhicle high, honohicle H2SO4. So what does it mean if it's strong? It means it completely forms ions in solution when it dissolves. Same thing with the strong bases. What happens when they dissolve? Well, they come form ions completely. So if there was uh, one mole of this stuff, when it dissolved in water, there would be zero moles of this stuff, and there'd be one mole of this and one mole of this, because there's a one-to-one -one ratio for these things. Completely dissolves and completely forms this. What are weak bases? Well, one example of a weak base is ammonia, NH3. It's a weak base. It doesn't completely dissociate, and it hangs around almost all the time, is that. The word disassociation is sometimes a tricky one for students to wrap their heads around. Dis Association means not associated. Associated would mean like stuck together, like H and F, like NH3, like HC2H3O2. They're stuck together and they stay together all the time. Hyper, on the other hand, completely dissociates and wants to be apart from H plus and Br minus. KOH completely dissociates to form K plus and OH minus. That's what makes them strong. It doesn't mean there's lots of it dissolved in water. It just means that whatever is dissolved in water completely breaks up. And that's what makes soluble ionic salts strong electrolytes as well. Whatever does dissolve completely breaks up. So here's the first sample question right here. Which of the following is a strong acid? H2SO3, HBr, HC2H3O2. And hopefully you know the answer to that already. HBr is the only strong acid listed there. Which are the strong bases? I already gave you those on another sheet of paper. How can you easily memorize both? Well, one forms a B on the periodic table table for B for base, and then the other one, of course, has a cheer, hyperhicle high, honohicle low, H2SO4. Memorize those guys for a quiz coming to near you very, very soon. Let's move on to the next page. For this one, sample exercise 4.5, we need the picture on page 132. Which of the following diagrams represents aqueous solutions of three acids, HX, HY, and HZ, with water molecules emitted for clarity? Rank them from strongest to weakest. So here's the picture. Here's the picture. You can see right here HX, HY, and HZ. Now the definition of a strong acid is one that completely dissociates or completely forms ions. Which one, in other words, if we want to answer this question, has the most ions. And if you look carefully at them, you'll notice that HY is composed of nothing but positive and negative ions. Positive and negative ions. All throughout, lots of positive and negative ions. HX has a few positives and negatives, like one, two, three, four of them. And HZ, if you look at it, has one, two, three, four, five, six more positives and negatives than HX. So if we wanted to rank these according to strength, the one that forms the most ions right here, HY would be the strongest. The one that forms the second most, HZ would be the second strongest, and HX would be the weakest. So uh, let's see which they want it. They want it from strongest to weakest. So um, strongest we said was HY. The next strongest, I'll just put a greater than sign. The next strongest we said was HZ, and the next or the weakest was HX, because it formed the least ions or the least charged particles in solution. It's the same with strong and weak electrolytes. We'd say this is the strongest electrolyte, this is the weakest electrolyte, because it forms the least positive and negative they charge things. Sample exercise 4.6. Classify each of the following dissolved substances as strong electrolyte, weak electrolyte, or non-electrolyte. Well, 
As you know, strong electrolytes are the ones that completely dissolve in water and form ions. Weak electrolytes, they dissolve in water, but they don't form ions. So let's look at each of these. Cackle, C-A-C-L-2. What is it? Well, it's got a metal and a non-metal. So it's a salt. Metal and a non-metal that dissolve in water are, uh, uh, that dissolve, follow the solubilities and rules and dissolve in water will completely ionize and it will form Ca plus 2 and 2 Cl minuses. So it's going to form three ions for every, for every um, formula unit that dissolves. Uh, HNO3, hey HNO3 is a strong acid, HONO. Oh, it's going to give me H plus and it's going to give me NO3 minus. It's completely dissociate and dissolve. It's going to give me two ions, H plus and NO3 minus, for every formula unit of this that dissolves. CH5OH, hmm, I don't see C2H5OH. I've never really memorized anything about this guy. It's got all non-metals in it, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So what is it? If it doesn't fit into a category that you know, a strong base or a strong acid or a um, soluble ionic salt, then it's going to be a non-electrolyte. Non-electrolyte at all. So this is definitely going to be our weakest. And then the last one, HCHO2, known as formic acid. Hey, it's an acid. Is it one that I memorized? Hyperhicle high, honohicle low, H2SO4? No. So if it's not one I memorized, what must it be? It must be a weak acid because by process of elimination, we know that everything else is weak. So classify each substance as a strong, weak, or non. We said this is a strong, this one's a strong, this one's a non, and this one would be a weak electrolyte. Going on, practice exercise 4.6. Consider solutions in which 0.1 mole, mole of each of the following compounds is dissolved in one liter of water. And then they've got a list of one, two, three, four of them. Rank the solutions in order of increasing electrical conductivity based on the fact that greater number of ions in solution, the greater the conductivity. So what we want to really know here is which one's the strongest electrolyte and which one's the weakest. So let's look at what they are. Calcium nitrate, CaNO32. Going to break up completely completely to give calcium ions and two nitrate ions. So it's going to give us three ions per formula unit that dissolves. A super strong electrolyte because all nitrates are soluble. Glucose, I don't know if you know the formula for that. It's C6H12O6. But anyway, if you haven't memorized anything about it and it's all made of non-metals, guess what it is? Hopefully you guessed it is a non-electrolyte because it does not, well it dissolves in water but it does not dissociate at all. Uh, sodium acetate, well that's NaC2H3O2. All acetates and all sodiums are soluble, so it's doubly soluble. It gives us Na plus and C2H3O2 minus when it dissolves. So it's going to give us two ions per formula unit that dissolves, so it is a strong electrolyte as well. And then lastly, acetic acid, HC2H3O2. What kind of acid is this? Well, hopefully you know that it's what's called a weak acid. And for weak acids, because it's not hyperhicle high honolical OH to so far. If it's not one of those, it's weak. Hopefully, um, you, you can recognize that the reason I put double arrow here is because it only somewhat forms H plus and C2H3O2 minuses. And we'll actually start using these double arrows for weak electrolytes a lot more uh, in later chapters. So anyway, uh, it, we're supposed to list them in order increasing electrical conductivity. My weakest, of course, is going to be glucose. And then greater than that is going to be my uh, acetic acid. And then greater than that should be my one that gives me two formula units. So that's going to be my sodium acetate. And then the one that gives me the most is going to be my, um, my calcium nitrate down here. Because it gives me three particles per formula unit. So it's going to give me the most stuff that's going to dissolve in there for electricity. All right, a little bit more about acids and bases. It says, write the balanced molecular equation for the reaction between aqueous solutions of acetic acid, HC2H3O2, and barium hydroxide. Barium hydroxide is BaOH2. And if you notice this, we've got a weak acid plus a strong base. Weak acid plus a strong base is going to be like a double replacement reaction or a metathesis reaction like we 
we learned, where you take the positive ions and swap them. So we end up with barium together, which has a plus two charge, with the acetate, C2H3O2, which has a minus one charge. Drop and swap those charges. We end up with a small two down below here. Get rid of those charges because it's a neutral compound. And then we're going to end up with H and OH together. So we end up with HOH, which is sometimes known as water. To balance this equation, we'll need a two in front of the water, and we got a two here for the acetate. So we're going to have to have a two there. It gives me four hydrogens, four hydrogens, four hydrogens over here, two oxygens. Uh, I got two from right here, and I got two acetates, two acetates. Hey, it's balanced. This it says write the balanced molecular equation. Yippee, yippee, yippee. Now it says write the net ionic equation for this. Now remember, when you write ionic equations, you take the strong electrolytes and split them up. We know this is soluble and it's going to be dissolved and we know this is soluble and it's going to be dissolved. We know that barium acetate is soluble because it's got an acetate and we know that water is going to be a pure liquid so it dissolves. But you have to now jump through the hoop of is it strong or not. Not does it just dissolve like we did with salt, but is it strong. So ask the question right here. Strong, weak or not? Well, acetic acid you know is a not a weak electrolyte. So keep it together. Keep weak electrolytes together. So write it as HC2H3O2. You can still put the AQ down here, but you don't need to. Barium hydroxide, strong electrolyte, strong base. So break it up. BA plus two charge, and then bring this two out front here to say that there's two hydroxides, so two OH minus. Arrow on the other side, barium acetate, soluble or not? Well, all acetates are soluble. Remember, can, C-A-N-A -A stands for acetate. This is a salt, by the way, because it's got a metal and a polyatomic ion. And so this break up into BA plus two, and two C2H3O2 minuses. Notice how I had to bring the two out here to say that there's two of those uh, ions right there. And then lastly, water. Water is molecular. Water dissolves in water, I guess, but it doesn't break up in anything. So leave it as 2H2O, or I like to write it as 2HOH. Is there anything that spectates in this? Sure. Barium plus 2 and barium plus 2 are the same on both sides, so cross those guys off, and now you've got your net ionic. Notice how unique this net ionic is, is that we have something that dissolves, we have something that dissolves, but it's still a weak electrolyte because it is a weak acid. Okay, next, write the balanced molecular equation for the reaction of carbonic acid and potassium hydroxide. So we got carbonic acid this time, H. 2CO3, carbonic acid is the stuff that's in your soda pop, by the way, with potassium hydroxide, which is KOH. Draw the arrow. Now swap the partners, swap the positive ions, put the H together with the OH. Don't bring the two along. I know you're tempted to bring the three, though, because it's part of carbonate, the positive ion, potassium plus one. Carbonate, the negative ion, got a minus two charge. Drop and swap them. <coughs> Excuse me. Put a two down here, get rid of those charges because it's a neutral compound. Balance the equation, put a two right there. I believe we need a two in front of the water. Now we've got four, uh, two OHs right there, and then we've got two H's right there and our carbonate there. Okay, that's the balanced molecular. Now write the net ionic. Remember, in net ionic now, what you want to do is you only want to break up the strongs. H2CO3, strong, weak, or not. Well, it's called carbonic acid. Is that one you memorized? Is it a strong acid? No. So keep it together. H2CO3. KOH. Strong base, definitely. Okay, break it up. 2K plus and 2OH minus. Why did I put the two both places? Remember, take the two and distribute it into each one of those, kind of like math class. Then 2HOH. Well, that's water, right? 2H2O. And then uh, this guy right here, uh, potassium carbonate. 2K plus and CO3 2 minus right here. Anything the same on both sides? Yep. K plus, get rid of. K plus, get rid of. We're good to go. Besides being able to write net ionic equations of acid-base reactions, which are some called, sometimes called neutralization reactions because they form water, you also need to know or recognize gas-forming reactions that involve acids. The first one involves 
any salt that has the sulfide ion. For example, sodium sulfide, when it reacts with an acid, as for example HCl, will form a gas. The gas that it forms is H2S, because sulfur has a minus two charge and hydrogen, a plus one charge, and when you drop and swap, it forms H2S, which is a gas, and some NaCl. So it, this will bubble off and be a gas that is formed in this reaction. And so any salt that contains sulfide, S minus two, this is supposed to say, a minus two charge right up here, as long as it contains an S minus two ionic salt and it reacts with an acid, it's always gonna form a gas. Second of all, any acid that reacts with a carbonate, for example, let's say we have HCl and react it with potassium carbonate. When it forms, when it forms its products, it will form the uh, double replacement or metathesis reaction that forms H2CO3, two right here because hydrogen is plus one, carbonate is minus two, a drop and swap, and then it will also form some KCl. Now I know this reaction isn't balanced right now. I think I need a two here and a two right here, but the important part is that it forms this thing. H2CO3 decomposes decomposes immediately upon forming to make water and carbon dioxide gas. Now the KCl still remains there, but these two form right away and carbon dioxide is a gas, and so it's known as a gas forming reaction. Any carbonate reacting with an acid, doesn't matter what the acid is, I just used HCl as an example, will form carbon dioxide gas because the H2CO3 that forms will form a gas immediately. Lastly, H2CO3 containing salts. For example, let's say we have an acid like HI and it reacts with sodium hydrogen carbonate. This will also immediately form a gas. It will form NaI when we swap the Na and the H right here, and then it will form some H2CO3, which we saw up above right here, immediately decomposes into water and carbon dioxide gas. So the important anions to know here are sulfide, carbonate, and bicarbonate. Now there's two more to know, and it comes in this question. By analogy to examples already given in the text, predict what gas forms when Na2SO3 is treated with an acid HCl. Well, when a sulfite reacts with an acid, in this case HCl, it will form, swap the Na and the H, some NaCl, and then it will form some H with a positive one charge, and SO3 with a negative two charge, drop and swatch, H2SO3, get rid of these charges because it's a neutral substance, but this, just like H2CO3, immediately decomposes. This time it doesn't form carbon dioxide gas, but sulfur dioxide gas and water. And so, to complete our list of gas forming reactions, you not only need to know sulfides, carbonates, and hydrogen carbonates, but you also need to know sulfites and, guess what else, KHSO3 and an acid, let's pick HBr, will do the same thing as HCO3s. This guy would form water and sulfur dioxide and then some KBr because this would have come from forming the H2SO3 just like it did up here when this guy swaps with the bromine and goes together with the hydrogen. So just to summarize once again, just to summarize once again, there are five anions to memorize that when they're reactive with an acid will form a gas. What are those, th what, what are those, it's supposed to say five anions. The anions are S minus two, CO3 minus two, HCO3 minus one, SO3 minus two, 
and HSO3 minus 1. Those five anions, when they're combined with anything, when they react with an acid, will form a gas. And what gas does each form? This one forms H2S, this one's going to form carbon dioxide, those two will, and these will form sulfur dioxide. Good luck with your acid-base reactions.